Remembering artist Robert Lankiewicz, 1941 to 2002. On one of my many walkabouts, I was walking around the back of Plymouth Barbican. I came across the shop front in the parade. The window was full of sketches and interesting drawings. It made me want to take a closer look. There were hard wooden oak doors on either side of the shop front, which is still there. One was locked. I managed to open the one on the right hand side. I opened the door and walked inside. I came across the library on the left hand side okay. with a great big wooden door to it and a little window. To the right of the library was a staircase. So I started so going up the stairs. Here, <laughs> going up two floors, there were rooms that were just full of books, which were his main library, covering every aspect of the human behavioural patterns. Many of the books were first edition. The whole atmosphere was warm with tungsten overload from the lighting and the wooden colours of browns and golds. The studio had an air of mystery about it, warm and inviting, free from the hustle bustle of the Barbican and Plymouth outside. Celebrities of the day would visit there from the Theatre Royal. I once met George Melly in there, talking to Robert on the mobile phone. Some of Robert's collections were quite dark. This cabinet was full of poisons and skulls. For many years Robert befriended the down and outs in Plymouth, especially a guy called Diogenes. And when Diogenes died, an arrangement was made to have his body preserved and hidden away. It was assumed that it was in the building somewhere, but nobody knew where. Diogenes was also known as the Bishop. After Robert died in 2002, the body of an 18th century witch was found in one of the drawers in Robert's studio. It's believed he bought her in auction. Quite often you wouldn't see Robert because he'd be working in other locations or working at night, but there would always be a beautiful lady as a receptionist in the main gallery. Below Robert's studio was the Panya Market with a life of its own. That is also now closed. With new owners for the building, it's very undecisive as to what direction it's going to go into now because of the preservation orders on the structure of the building. Towards the end of Robert's life, he was trying to get funding to build a new gallery and studio on the site and make it a major centre for the public. A lot of promises from the council and the Plymouth University never came to anything. Like a lot of old school artists, Robert made himself part of the art form by saying things to people that would make him stand out and stirring up controversy in the press and in the local population and making people think, which is what art's all about. At six foot plus, with long flowing hair and a quiet tone of voice, he stood out from the crowd with his long black coat and his red scarf.
After you climbed all the stairs, looked through the galleries, you come into a great big cavern uh, which you'd yeah. open out. And I've never seen anything and like um, it. It's just wall to walls of paintings. Painting Prolific. Over many years, covering every subject matter on human behaviour. The art of Robert Lenkiewicz. With tungsten lighting everywhere, it influenced his painting and the style of his work. Hardly any daylight at all. It gave that warm feel. It's believed that Robert fathered 19 children and he had lots of mistresses. A lot of them were in the paintings around the building. He also had other studios across the city. At the back of this studio, Robert had a double bed which he had used for relaxing in the afternoon. At the side of that was a coffin. It's a project I'm doing at college. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, doing an experimental sort of uh, media thing, really. But uh, I'm not quite used to this camera. <laughs> Thank you. 
something like PR, so they oh, it's not a job, you know, you know, I just don't have a choice, but um, it's up and down, sometimes, you know, it can be really, really busy, I can literally be here all day, you know, and then I'll, you know, we've just had a really quiet couple of weeks where, you know, it's really good, you know, I'm going to get close to the exhibition, you know, it's going to be very exciting, and then I'll be going up there and staying there. You said lay the groundwork and get the preparation done, there'll be less for you to do when it actually comes to the best. Yeah, it's not easy for someone like Robert because everything's so sort of disorganised and chaotic and I can't really keep doing it on it, but um, You do miss the, the selling of the paintings for him, do you? That's right, all the kind of practical. Patty sort of does appointments uh -huh. and things, uh, and I just seem to do a bit of practical. Right. They're selling, they're going for high prices when they go down to Birmingham, aren't they? Yeah, they go for about three times what they go for here. Uh -huh. um, by the time the exhibition comes, you know, I think they're planning to sell, you know, a painting this size for something like 15,000. Yeah. Whereas we're selling it for three, three thousand. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I heard that they were going for a minimum of 10,000 pounds. In Birmingham. In Birmingham, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it should be quite wealthy. At the end of it, if he sells them all, right? Well, um, they think they can raise a million pounds, uh -huh. um, and then he'll get half. Yeah. So it's simplifying, it's simplifying it a bit, but um, only half. Well, half, yeah. Because of the overheads and the, the running costs and everything. Well, they make 100%. Uh -huh. they make, Robert gets what he wants for the paintings, and then he just charge double. Oh, yeah, which is fair enough. Yeah, so that's fair enough. So he, he should get half of that, which um, should be enough for him to buy his building, which is what. Uh -huh. Oh, that's right, because they were trying to get him out, weren't they? Well, it's up for sale. Yeah. We're trying to get him out, but you know, we're going to buy the building um, first. And then because he's, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's had things put in, like the shower unit and things like that. So he's intending to stay anywhere. Oh, yeah. So. It's looking very, you know, positive. Yeah.
Thanks to the late Robert Lenkovitz, family and friends, for the making of this video. Music on this video is with great thanks by John the Prairie of Souls, www.thepraideofsouls.co.uk. This has been a Chris Summerfield Historical Video Production 2016. You can contact me at CCS Photo 12, and if you can help to sponsor my videos, you can PayPal me at ChristopherSummerfield at gmail.com. Thanks for watching the video. It's a historical lifestyle thing.